of our seventh annual Critical Race Studies Symposium. So for those of you who couldn't join us last night, we had over 200 people here. It was a packed house, um, and we're excited to continue the conversation we started last night. So um, today, um, we have a couple of plenary sessions, and then we have concurrent panels after, um, after our session today, after our session right now. Um, our first panel will be looking at the way whiteness as property intersects with contemporary civil rights debates. And in your program, there is a typo. This panel does go till 11.15, not, I think it says 10.30 in there, but it goes till 11.15. And then there's a break from 11.15 to 11.30. And then there are seven concurrent sessions you can choose from. The room numbers are in um, the excerpt that you see in your folders. And if you have questions as to how to get to any of the room numbers, you can ask one of the students, you can ask myself, one of our students right here um, has raised their hand. At the end, I'll have students raise their hands again to um, see people who can, um, that, so you can see people who can direct you as to where you need to go. Um, before we begin, I also want to thank some of our sponsors who helped us make this symposium possible. They include um, the UCLA Office of the Provost, the UCLA Office of Diversity and Faculty Development, the Rosalind and Arthur Gilbert Foundation, the Anne C. Rosenfeld Symposium Fund, Munger, Tolls, and Olson, and the UCLA Institute for American Cultures. Um, so again, we want to thank you all for coming, for supporting our work, and for celebrating the 20th anniversary of whiteness as property. Um, and with that, I also want to introduce um, someone who has really helped us make this symposium possible, Christine Littleton. Chris, oh, you can applaud, sorry. <laughs> so, Christine Littleton is a professor of law and women's study and has taught um, at UCLA since 1983. Since 2010, she has also served in the Chancellor's Organization as Vice Provost for Diversity and Faculty Development. She has helped develop the UCLA School of Law's policies and procedures on accommodations for students with disabilities, and she has also served on the Faculty Advisory Committee for the Women's Law Journal, for our very own Critical Race Studies Program, and for the Williams Institute on Sexual Orientation and the Law. So thank you for being such a strong advocate um, of our program, and thank you for being here. One of the really fun things I get to do in this job is to say, on behalf of the Chancellor of UCLA, <laughs> I want to welcome you to this wonderful symposium. Those of you who were here last night know that you got an education second to none. Uh, every single panelist was insightful and brilliant um, and made me wish I could go back to law school. No. <laughs> uh, actually, I was involved in both uh, critical legal studies and feminist critical legal studies. Um, and the first conference but that CLS, Critical Legal Studies, held on race specifically here in Los Angeles. Um, that was a response to the question that uh, Kim Crenshaw told us was raised at a CLS conference, which was, what is it about your whiteness that keeps people of color from coming and joining this conversation? This is about us. Um, and it reminds me also of the... Uh, <laughs> of the slogan from the disability rights movement, nothing about us without us. This is about framing arguments and policy and, and interventions by the people who are experiencing the problem, not by some outside group or outside experts. We are the experts on our own experience. We can teach others about that experience and about its value. One of the great things about the research being done now is the demonstration by many, by scientists, that diverse working groups outperform non-diverse groups, even when the non-diverse group is of greater average ability. Think of that. Adding diversity to a group including and, in fact, full participation of people from different backgrounds. Not all, it's not only a nice thing to do, right? It's not, it's not only a legal thing to do. 
It's not only a question of finding that talent that has been ignored or overlooked uh, under white patriarchal heteronormative notions. It is about making the stuff better. The stuff is better when we are there. The research is better, the teaching is better, this mission is better. The Chancellor recognizes that. The Provost and the Executive Vice Chancellor have um, set aside resources for a brand new initiative. Um, and currently, there is a nationwide search going on to find a person to serve as not just Vice Provost for Diversity, Vice Chancellor for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And I want to, in addition, the investigative resources for investigating discrimination against faculty at UCLA have quadrupled this year. Quadrupled. Went from one investigator to four. So there will be now a response to the Moreno report which said your procedures don't allow people to claim discrimination and get an investigation. They are outdated and they don't work really well. Hey, now we have the resources to go forward and want to go forward because we know that UCLA has only gained its stature so far because it was willing to open its doors to people who had not, who were first generation, who did not have quote unquote pedigrees, who had not, who had not followed the traditional roots. And we can't afford to lose that going forward because we will go backwards unless we keep going forwards. It's the other thing that has become very clear. As soon as you stop paying attention, things go backwards. <laughs> I've also been very interested in the, the move that Baki made from discrimination to diversity. It's too easy for us to be comfortable with the idea of diversity and ignore the issue of discrimination. So two of these investigators that have been hired are discrimination officers, not just diversity officers. We need both. We need full participation, not just inclusion, and we also need to start to, to notice discrimination when it happens, whether it's intentional or not, to notice it, to acknowledge it, and to remedy it, to, to stop it as much as possible, and to cure it when it happens, because otherwise, we will fail the mission that this university was set up to proceed and to succeed. This symposium is one of the places where you can actually see the work being done. You can hear the work being done, and that is the cutting edge of legal theory and of legal practice. And those of you who are going into law, please, Keep it, forward. Keep it going forward. Pay it forward. You are getting the best. Pay it forward. I'm so pleased. Thank you for asking me to say welcome on behalf of Chancellor Block, the Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost Scott Waugh, and my office of the Vice Provost for Diversity and Faculty Development. We're proud to support efforts like this because uh, I don't have to do it. No, I. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It is an honor and a privilege, and I am very pleased I got to hear the speakers last night, and very glad to see you here today. Have a wonderful day.